another very traditional uh, physics problem that deals with centripetal force, because centripetal force, you know, as we have already discussed, is when anything goes around a turn, right, or it goes around in a circle, or, you know, a turn is just part of an arc or a part of a circle. So at any time you go in a curve, centripetal force, you have some force pulling in. A very traditional problem here in physics is going to be uh, a car going around a turn on a road, and can it make the turn? Or, or is it going to slide off? Is the car not going to be able to provide enough centripetal force? So let's solve that problem now. I have a car going around a turn here. Um, the turn it has a radius of 92 meters. So in other words, this radius of curvature, if you will, if I, if I took this road and I looped it all the way around into a circle, that circle would have a radius of 92 meters. The coefficient between all-weather tires and pavement is somewhere around 0.75, uh, and the car is going 18 meters per second. So I want to know, can this car make, a t make the turn? It's going to be a comparison problem. The way to do that is solve for the velocity, the maximum velocity the car can actually go around the turn, and compare it to its actual velocity, 18 meters per second. If the maximum velocity a car can go is greater than 18, greater or equal, that, equal to 18 meters per second, the car is good. If it's less than that, then the car is going to start sliding and would slide into the tree. Technically, you could drift and because there's still some coefficient of friction while you're sliding. It's not like you're completely going to uh, go straight. But um, you, know, you, you would slide off. You wouldn't be able to make the turn. So uh, let's do a free body diagram. I went ahead and set one up for us. Looking at the rear view of the car, this picture up here is kind of a top view. So rear view of a car. Um, going around a turn. Normal force going up and gravity going down. Normal force because obviously the car is on the pavement, right? And gravity always pulls straight down. Now, what force actually points to the inside of the circle? I have here labeled friction, but l let me help you think through that. If there was, if the car was on ice, right, and there, there was no friction, just a pure sheet of ice, can the car turn? Well, no. It's actually the force of friction between the tires and the road that allows you to be able to turn. If there wasn't any friction, you couldn't turn. So it's the force of friction pointing into the circle. Now, now think about this being the rear view from this and this being the top view here. So force of friction is always pointing into the circle. There is no force pointing out of the circle. Um, so let's sum up our forces in the x and y axis. Now in the x axis, I'm not actually going to use sum of the forces equals ma. I'm going to use centripetal force because in the x axis, that's where the car is turning. And so here in this picture, it's turning to the right here. And, and from our rear view, uh, our rear view free body diagram uh, in the x axis. So one uh, centripetal force equals m v squared over r. And let's go ahead and let's start solving here. Force of friction. Force of friction equals m v squared over r. Now, what you substitute in for some of the centripetal forces. Everything that goes into the circle minus everything that goes out of the circle. And if something was at an angle, you'd have to get that component. But here, it's all along the x-axis force, where into the circle is going to the right and out of the circle is going to the left. And I only have one force, the force of friction. So it's just force of friction uh, equals mv squared over r here. All right, force of friction breaks, at, breaks down into mu... Fn. Remember, my goal here is to solve for final velocity or the velocity of this. So this is looking for the maximum velocity we can go around a turn. Uh, let's see, mv squared over r. And so let's kind of take an assessment where we're at so far. I do know the coefficient of friction, 0.75. I don't know the normal force. I don't know the car's mass. Here's what I'm looking for, velocity. In other words, we're going to make this velocity the highest it can. We're solving for v max. The way we do that is by plugging in everything here. In other words, we're going to maximize our friction. We're going to take friction all the way to the limits. So what's the best hold it can do? Mu times normal force. And that'll let us solve for v here, velocity max. So that, that's our goal. Um, and radius. I do know the radius of curvature. Let's go get normal force. Now, normal force you can always get from the y-axis. So in our y-axis, if I call up positive and down negative over here, I've got Fn minus Fg equals, now the acceleration here in the y-axis is zero, right? The car isn't flying up in outer space or plunging down to the depths of the Earth, so equals zero. That means Fn 
equals fg, uh, so that fn equals mg. And this is what you're used to saying with friction, right? And then we're able to substitute that in over here. So now I got mu mg equals mv squared over r here in my x-axis. Notice also, I have mass in both terms, in the numerator of this term, you know, divided by 1, if you will, um, and then the mass in the numerator of this term over here. So I have mass in all of my terms. I'm able to cancel them out, or if you need to think of it as dividing both sides by m, feel free to do that. So now I've got mu g equals v squared over r. Now this should make logical sense to you. This says the acceleration that you have due to friction, right? Um, notice I divided by the mass. Force is mass times acceleration. So the maximum acceleration that friction can provide is equal to, here's the equation for centripetal acceleration, v squared over r. In other words, whenever turning mass of the vehicle doesn't really matter. Now, it, it does matter if we had to deal with torque and other, and other issues, but in this case, if we're going at it in a very basic mindset, mass doesn't matter. In, in reality, it matters a little bit, but only, only a very little bit there. So now let's just go ahead and work some algebra and solve for final velocity. I'm going to actually start working my algebra uh, in, in letter format, which is a good habit to be in there. Uh, it's how college professors work it, and really it, it's very helpful because then you're not actually having to uh, go through the process of um, worrying about rounding with each step. So uh, whenever, whenever I work it through... Uh, not actually uh, putting in numbers yet, I get velocity, my velocity max, right? The best we can do is going to be the square root of the radius times the coefficient of friction times gravity. And whenever I substitute in my numbers, I come out with a maximum velocity of 26 meters per second, meaning this car that's only going 18 meters per second will be able to make the turn without any problem. Uh, now, now, this I should point out, 18 meters per second isn't all that fast, and 92 meters isn't a very sharp turn. Please be careful while driving, because uh, it's not about how good of a driver you are. It's not about what kind of car you have. <laughs> Notice mass canceled, right? Uh, this is purely about whether you can make a turn or not. Is purely about road conditions, right? Mu, the coefficient of friction, how sharp the turn is, the radius, uh, and your velocity going around it. It's, it's not about any external factors that you control.